uh, let's start lecture 28 and the course is corrosion protection methods and if we observe carefully for the last few lecture uh, we have been talking about effect of environmental factors and associated corrosion behavior and subsequently corrosion protection we have talked about removal of uh, corrosives and then we talked uh, 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 on the effect of oxidants or oxidizers on the active metal as well as passive metal and we have seen that uh, if we add oxidants in case of active metal corrosion rate increases so their removal of oxidant would be helpful but in case of active passive metal at times addition of oxidizer can be helpful to get better protection because it will take the material into the stable passive range quite easily now today we'll talk about uh, the effect of uh, uh, concentration of corrosive and here we are not talking about oxidizers here we are talking about only the corrosive for example hcl is a corrosive then we can talk about hno3 as a corrosive there what happens if we increase the concentration now uh, uh, we will also talk about effect of temperature at times uh, temperature increment can actually reduce corrosion rate now uh, that is very specific to certain ex uh, certain cases uh, cert this that is uh, very specific uh, and we'll have some examples but most of the cases almost all the cases increase in temperature uh, actually increases the corrosion rate so uh, uh, so if we have a low temperature corrosion protection is better so we'll talk about and discuss those cases uh, with a uh, lot of examples so let's at the same time we'll also talk about effect of velocity because uh, in most uh, in many of those practical applications the solution or the electrolyte is not stagnant rather those are flowing electrolytes and those cases uh, situation could be different it's not like what happens in stagnant condition sometimes increase in velocity helps in reducing the corrosion rate for example crevice as well as pitting corrosion that can be reduced if we have if we maintain certain velocity uh, but uh, in certain cases we can actually increase uh, 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 the corrosion rate if we increase the velocity so those instances also we'll try to uh, look at now when we talk about velocity we'd have to also look up look, we have to look at uh, the mechanism uh, if the uh, mechanism uh, for corrosion is guided by the concentration polarization the situation could be something but if it is guided by the activation polarization then situation could be something and apart from that of course the velocity or the abrasion part would come in where erosion becomes important so we'll talk about those things uh, in our following discussion so let's uh, look at effect of change in concentration of corrosive or rather increase in concentration of corrosive so we'll have some examples uh, generally the curve pattern could be of this nature if we try to find out the corrosion rate this is the concentration it's increasing this way uh, in certain metals uh, the pattern looks like this and then one certain critical value is achieved the concentration value then the corrosion rate uh, increases at times exponentially okay so this is one sort of behavior so we can see that there are two segments one is this one segment one and there is another segment starting from this so this is segment two now this kind of behavior we can notice uh, let's say in case of segment one where we can see nickel in 
एन ए वो एच और एटीन एट स्टेनलेस स्टील इन एच एन ओ थ्री नाउ इन दिस केस दिस निकेल इफ यू डिप वी इफ वी डिप निकेल इन एन ए वो एच और डिप एटीन एट स्टेनलेस स्टील इन एच एन ओ थ्री immediately those uh, alloys or metals will get to the spontaneous passive uh, zone okay so that's a passive zone will be achieved very quickly and then definitely it will maintain that passive zone it will that material will be maintained in the passive zone for a, a wide range of concentration and this particular uh, thing is also related to the mixed potential theory uh, in brief if we try to look at the mixed potential theory and this happens in case of active passive metal so this is potential voltage and then log i ampere per centimeter square now if i try to look at uh, the active passive metal so it will have a curve like this so this anodic part so it is going through active zone and then passivity is achieved and then transpassive starts so this is transpassive this zone is passive and then this zone is if i try to look at the equilibrium potential for the metal in that solution equilibrium metal which is dissolving uh, in the anodic part so this is metal minus ne equal to m n plus uh, this particular current density correspond corresponds to ip which is the lowest current uh, in that particular anodic part of course let us not look at uh, uh, if i try to see the interaction with the cathodic reaction then this can be sometimes the lowest current density for example if a cathodic current and cathodic part interacts here then the this is the cathodic part which is corresponding to ic so then this becomes i core okay now if this reaction interacts here so then definitely this is my ic this is e equilibrium for cathodic reaction and this is cathodic reaction 1 prime uh, for one type of cathodic reaction and this is e equilibrium for cathodic reaction let's say double prime fine so in one case uh, the potential equilibrium potential for the cathodic reaction is uh, very high in that potential axis now we could see that if we compare these two situations as per mixed potential theory um, we have a very high corrosion rate uh, which is located at this location fine so their corrosion rate would be very high but somehow if we have some other oxidation or some other redu reduction process or cathodic polarization line that interacts the anodic polarization line in the passive zone then of course uh, this becomes my I core which is equal to I P or the passive current density which is uh, much lower than the I core what we have observed in case of uh, situation where cathodic reaction uh, polarization line and anodic reaction polarization line they interacts at uh, in the active zone but here it is interacting in the passive zone. So, we want this thing to happen in case of passive material, active passive material because once we achieve passivity, it can maintain at a maintain very low corrosion rate at the same time, uh, uh, it, if we somehow choose a solution, choose a, choose, if, if somehow that material shows a wide range of passivity in a particular electrolyte where this material is going to be used then definitely that passivity will be maintained for a long long uh, time as well as 
over the wide range of concentration it can be it can maintain passivity why uh, rather how so if we try to say this if we increase the concentration let us say this is my concentration initial concentration if we increase the concentration uh, I know that if I try to look at the critical concentration which will be crossing the I critical if we go back to our uh, lecture 27 you will get to know the importance of this I critical. So, this is uh, just bypassing the I critical point which is the maximum point in the while it uh, the metal achieves uh, while met the metal goes or changes from active zone to the passive zone. So, once it crosses then it this particular uh, concentration of that particular corrosive would allow uh, the metal to get into the passive zone. Of course, it has to cross that I critical it should not touch it rather it should bypass it. Now, uh, from this concentration as we increase the concentration just like increasing the oxidant concentration the poten equilibrium potential goes up and up till this up till this it can actually maintain passivity. But if we see that in that particular environment my passive zone length is very high let us say this is my passive zone length instead of breaking here. Okay. So, if this is the passive zone which is a wide range of passive zone. Okay. So, then I could see that this will be my limiting concentration of the corrosive where it can if where if we increase the concentration little bit then it will reach to the trans passive zone. So, we can see the from this concentration to this concentration level over a wide range I can maintain spontaneous passivity. Uh, that material will go to the spontaneous passivity and then passivity will be maintained. So, that is what if we see that between this particular concentration zone, I always maintain the corrosion rate at a fixed value which is I p. So, that is what it is flat, this particular flat zone is observed, this particular zone is observed and that happens in case of nickel one two such examples nickel in NaOH or 188 chromium and uh, in HNO3. So, there over a wide range of concentration uh, the material can uh, remain in the passive zone. So, that is what you have a constant current density equal to I passive and the corrosion rate also remains almost constant. Now, if we in some cases, it can follow both 1 and 2 okay. and these happens when the material shows low corrosion rate because of some surface film formation at a lower concentration of the corrosive, but at a higher concentration of corrosive that film can be soluble. And then once uh, that high concentration corrosive uh, dissolves that passive layer or not passive layer is a kind of protective layer here immediately uh, we can get to see a kind of exponential rise in corrosion rate. That happens one such example is laid in H2SO4. So, at low concentration of H2SO4, we can have PBSO4 fill okay. or sometimes it can also form PBO fill. But once concentration of H2SO4 goes up at some critical value, this particular phase dissolves. So, that means the bare metal surface is exposed and the material corrosion rate further increases and sometimes it becomes exponential rise. So, that particular pattern is observed in case of lead in lead pipe let us say consider lead pipe carrying H2SO4 
at a low uh, concentration it can maintain low corrosion rate but at a high concentration definitely lead becomes highly soluble okay corrosion rate further increases so that's what these two pattern can be observed in case of lead starting from low concentration of H2SO4 to high concentration of H2SO4 now there could be one more pattern that can be uh, that can be possible so initially it's it's actually gradually increases corrosion rate as the concentration of the corrosive increases and then suddenly drops and then it maintains a constant value okay so this kind of pattern can be observed okay so this uh, let's say this is uh, pattern a and let's say this is pattern b in pattern a we have two segments one segment we have seen nickel in NaOH or 188 in 18H stainless steel in HNO3 and pattern uh, pattern A uh, with the segment of 1 and 2 PB or the lead in H2SO4 can follow that. But pattern B is followed if the uh, uh, example let us say so these two cases are pattern A. So, as we increase the concentration of the corrosive, we have increase in corrosion rate and then gradually the corrosion rate decreases and then reaches to the plateau. So, this happens in case of mainly acid solution. Let us say one such example is 18-8 uh, stainless steel in H2SO4 or Another example is Fe in H2SO4. So, what happens as concentration increases, H plus ion concentration also increases. So, as H plus ion concentration increases, so that means equilibrium potential for hydrogen also increases because the, because hydrogen and concentration is increasing and hence I would see because uh, hydrogen ion is basically an oxidant and we are increasing the oxidant concentration corrosion rate increases. But once the concentration reaches certain limit limiting concentration, the ionization of acid decreases. So, once ionization of the acid decreases because of the increase in concentration, hydrogen ion generation also decreases. So, that means as hydrogen ion generation decreases and with increase in further concentration, the ionization becomes very limited. So, that is why at times for example, iron plain carbon steel if we hold a concentrated H2SO4 we get to see a very very low corrosion rate of iron because, uh, uh, because of the very situation that concentrated H2SO4 does not ionize much and of course, it is at ambient temperature it is not at high temperature the room temperature or low temperature. So, that case because we do not have hydrogen ion which is basically the source for uh, reduction process to happen and here we do not we should not have dissolved oxygen fine. So, only hydrogen ion reduction is the cathodic reaction. So, if we do not have much of hydrogen ion concentration definitely uh, the rate of uh, dissolution of iron would also go down. So, it will be it will be protected. So, this is uh, uh, the case where uh, uh, we can see the pattern B gradually increases because of the ionization of the acid at certain limit of uh, the concentration ionization start decreasing and at a very high concentration ionization becomes very limited. So, then we do not have the active species for reduction process and the corrosion rate of that metal decreases. Now, as you see that the behavior of the metal uh, in a particular uh, electrolyte could be different as we increase the concentration 
and here we are not talking about the oxidants. Now, those behaviors should be known beforehand and that is what uh, experimentation in corrosion protection is very much needed. Now, here you could see that certain metal uh, like 188 uh, stainless steel or nickel in uh, NaOH or 18H stainless steel in HNO3 at room temperature, uh, it can maintain a very low corrosion rate uh, over, a lot, over a wide range of uh, concentration of those corrosives. But in case of lead, uh, interestingly, though it gives you a very good protection at a low concentration of H2SO4, but once the concentration goes up at, and reaches a critical value and beyond that increase in corrosion can dissolve the corrosion product uh, or the, uh, uh, the product that is forming on top of it and that gives you the protection which is lead sulphate or lead oxide and that can be dissolved at a higher concentration of H2SO4. So, then it will expose the surface and it will dissolve quickly. So, uh, what condition will lead to uh, a better corrosion protection or in other way low corrosion rate or maintain low corrosion rate, we should, uh, uh, we should do a lot of experimentation in the lab scale as well as in the, uh, in, in the pilot scale so that we have a better idea and then we go for uh, change of environment accordingly. So, now if I talk about temperature. temperature effect. Interestingly, uh, almost all the metals, if we increase temperature, the corrosion rate increases exponentially. Now, uh, why? Because uh, uh, all the corrosion is involving uh, electrochemical reactions and electrochemical reaction, any chemical reactions with increase in temperature, the rate generally increases. So, that is what the corrosion rate is also, uh, the corrosion rate also increases. So, that is what maintaining low temperature is better for better protection of metals and alloys uh, for uh, 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 better corrosion, uh, corrosion protection. So, what I am saying that lower temperature would give you a better protection, corrosion protection for metals and alloys. Now, uh, uh, it, it does not mean that at a lower corrosion, lower temperature, though it gives you a better protection uh, from corrosion point of view, but it can lead to some other aspects like DVDT or a ductile beetle transition can happen at a low temperature and then the material can be very brittle. So, that uh, instance needs to be also considered. Uh, we are only talking about corrosion point of view. Uh, so, hence uh, decreasing temperature would uh, lead to a better protection or low corrosion rate. So, if I try to look at the uh, graph let us say temperature increases and corrosion rate. So, it would also increase like it would increase uh, at a very high rate exponentially. Now, uh, in some cases with increase in temperature there could be a limited effect, but once the temperature goes up beyond certain limit, uh, the corrosion rate can shoot up. Okay. So, it can be like this. So, let us say it maintains a low corrosion rate up to certain temperature range and then suddenly it shoots up. Okay. So, this particular behavior uh, can also be observed. Okay. So, that means we have two pattern, one is pattern A and one is pattern B. So, pattern A, let us say we can have examples of pattern A, mainly in case of active metals this pattern A uh, is very much observed uh, like uh, nickel in H HCl or iron in HF. Okay there could be a rapid uh, uh, corrosion in those solutions if we increase temperature. Now, uh, pattern B can be observed in case of active passive metal. Let us say 18.8 
in HNO3. So, this is interesting, this is also can be explained with reference to uh, mixed potential theory. What happens this HNO3 can have several uh, uh, reduction potential, standard reduction potential. So, depending on the uh, temperature, its oxidizing ability increases. So, that means what do I mean by oxidizing ability? increases with temperature increment. Now, let us say metal 1 and metal 2 at let us say ambient temperature, temperature 1, I could have E naught value and here also I could have 1 E naught value. So, these two values are there at ambient temperature or temperature 1. Now, uh, there could be possibility that uh, uh, this is little, let us say if, if we consider reduction potential. Fine. So, now if E naught m 1 n plus m is greater than E naught m 2 n plus m. So, here n plus is nothing but I am talking about two reaction reduction reaction one is n plus plus n e equal to m 1 m 2 n plus plus n e equal to m 2. So, both the cases uh, their oxidation numbers are same. Now, if such situation arises at a particular temperature we can say that m 1 has a higher reduction reduction ability okay it as compared to m2 it means that m1 ion n plus ion if it is present and m2 n plus ion if it is also present along with m1 n plus then m 1 n plus has higher ability to get reduced and then deposit on on the metal surface on the metal surface fine. Now, when we talk about this let us say if we consider n 1 n plus plus m 2 equal to m 1 plus m 2 n plus. So, this would be reaction then because m 1 n plus has got m 1 has higher reduction potential compared to m 2. So, it goes to this. So, reduction and this one goes to this is oxidation or anodic process because it is releasing uh, n electron which are taken by uh, m 1 n plus. Now, we can say that this is oxidant and this is a reductant. Now, we could see that when we have uh, this reaction, now we see that uh, m 1 has higher reduction ability compared to m 2 as well as we uh, have written the equation where m 1 n plus is acting like oxidant and m 2 uh, is acting like a reductant and that is what you have redox reaction reduction as well as oxidation. Now, when we have such situation we can also say that this one is actually oxidizing m 2, but m 1 n plus is getting reduced. So, m 2 is reducing m 1 plus. So, we can say m 1 n plus oxidizes m 2 and m 2 reduces m 1 n plus. And since m 1 n plus has got a higher reduction ability, so that means it should have higher m 1 n plus has a higher 
oxidizing ability. Oxidizing ability means it can oxidize other metal with a lower reduction potential. So, here oxidizing ability means that particular acid, this is a very strong oxidant and all the oxidants have reduction oxidizing ability of other metal. Okay. So, that is what exactly happens here. So, what happens as per mixed potential theory for active passive metal, I can have a plot like this. So, this is my active metal. So, now as per the previous understanding, we are not writing all those details. So, this is the uh, active passive metal anodic part or anodic polarization part and we see a passive zone which is uh, this one the passive zone, this one is basically the active zone. passive and then this is trans passive. Now, in this case initially the material is in passive zone. So, it maintains passivity or let us say here it maintains passivity. Now, interesting is this is the cathodic part. corresponding to I c or the cathodic current density. Now, the corrosion rate would be here which is I cor equal to I p since this is I p as per mixed potential theory. Now, this particular point lies very close to this trans passive zone this particular point. Now, if we increase temperature, what happens? The oxidizing power increases as we have seen that a higher reduction potential means higher oxidizing power. So, oxidizing power increases means its reduction potential also increases. So, the reduction potential goes up. Okay. Now, since it is close to and as we go up, it will have its own corresponding polarization plot. and we could see that it is cutting at different location and it is quickly getting into the trans passive zone after maintaining uh, this uh, passive uh, portion then it goes to trans passive zone definitely once it goes to trans passive zone the corrosion rate again increases. So, now this is the behavior what we could see here. Okay. what we could see here. So, now here what happens initially up till this it maintain, maintains passive zone and as the reduction oxidizing ability increases the reduction potential goes up, reduction potential is going up and corresponding cathodic polarization line is cutting the active passive uh, anodic part initially in the passive zone and then goes into active zone uh, which is nothing but the trans passive zone. So, that is what the corrosion rate again increases like this. So, this is uh, a typical uh, of uh, uh, 18 H stainless steel in HNO 3. So, this is the effect of uh, increasing oxidizing ability of uh, the corrosive with temperature uh, or with increase in temperature. So, this happens there. So, the and that means we could see two aspects one is ever increasing corrosion rate with temperature and this happens in case of active metal. 
since uh, the reaction rate also increases with temperature. The second case there could be sudden increasing increase in corrosion rate with temperature, temperature increase definitely both the cases uh, because of increase in oxidizing ability. So, there could be third instance where uh, we can get decrease in corrosion rate with increase in temperature. So, that instance is observed uh, if we consider iron in sea water or fresh water. So, with increase in temperature if dissolved oxygen removes uh, is removed actually. So, in temperature increases uh, dissolved oxygen concentration decreases and we know that oxygen is basically the uh, reduction uh, oxidant which actually uh, gets reduced and then uh, that is the reduction process it can be O2 plus 2 H 2 O plus 4 E equal to 4 O H minus. So, if this concentration decreases so the reaction would not go at a higher rate definitely the corrosion rate also would decrease. So, it is basically uh, the deaeration effect of the uh, medium or the electrolyte. So, there could be possibility of decrease in corrosion rate because you are removing the active oxidant from the medium or the electrolyte. So, this is about uh, effect of temperature on the corrosion rate. So, we can sense that uh, there could be possibility of uh, almost all cases the possibility of having low corrosion or a better corrosion protection at a lower temperature, but uh, in some instances uh, even with increase in temperature there could be possibility of maintenance of very low temperature that, but once the temperature crosses certain limit it actually gets to a very active dissolution and that happens in case of active passive metals as we have seen in the act in case of 18 H stainless steel in H HNO3, but there could be possibility of also decrease in corrosion rate because of removal of corrosive again here at the removal of corrosive happens because of increase in temperature. So, uh, we will talk about uh, uh, one more important aspect which is the influence of uh, velocity of, uh, of that fluid or the electrolyte on the metal corrosion and we can see whether there could be a possibility of better maintained corrosion protection. Uh, let till then thank you.